Hi, Jonathan. Can you tell me if you can hear me, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, thank God. We were having all kinds of problems. Hey, Christy, I think we fixed the problem. Me and me and myself. I see that. Good job. Thank you. Yes. Rebooting sometimes. Uh, yeah. Yep. You know, it wouldn't. Have, it would not have been a total disaster if we couldn't have had the class. I would have put up one of my older, one of my golden oldie lectures for you guys. Boy, I'm, I'm glad we got in here. Yeah. Now give, now give me a let, give, Let's wait a minute. Let anybody else who hasn't given up on us. And sure. I'll get. I'll, I'll try to find the PowerPoint. Are we doing two again? Uh, we're going to go with three. OK, so we're going into three. OK, thank you. Yeah, I'm keeping us a little bit ahead. Are you keeping up with the class so far, Christy? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's a lot of stuff I already knew. Good, good. It's just it's just reinforcing stuff that I already knew. And um, yeah, so far so good. I'm, I'm keeping up. Excellent. Yeah. All right, come here you. Come here you. Man, I haven't had any problems in a long time. But right, here we go, let's see, we go chapter three. Chapter three, PowerPoints. Come on now. Share the screen. Okay. So Christy, if you were familiar with what some of the things we were doing earlier, this, this probably will give you some reminiscence. Thank you everybody for hanging in there with me. We finally figured out what the problem was. I had to go in and do some uh, very technical reprogramming and get this thing up and running. Thank you for your patience. So let's get started here with chapter number three. And by going a little bit ahead in the course like this, um, we'll leave time for a good test review perhaps when the time comes. And also we're not that far ahead here. So let's, let's keep punching away. Here we go. The double entry framework. T account, you've heard us talk about T accounts, huh? A T account. That's a T account because it looks like the letter T. T account, it mimics the general ledger. This is what your general ledger looks like. Your general ledger is gonna be a pair of T accounts, one with the uh, daily activity and the other with a balance. Shaped like a T, debit side, credit side. The only thing debit and credit means are left and right. That's all it means. Debit means left, credit means right. One is not better than the other. There's no value judgments here. And what you're gonna be learning now in the next few slides is the rules of increasing and decreasing these. Some accounts go up with a debit, some go up with a credit. So the tricky part in the class is coming up now where you have to get familiar with your debits and credits, DRCR, debit credit, just means left, right. Let's take a look at a T account. Here's cash. Your T account is gonna have a title and you're gonna have one T account for everything in your chart of accounts. If any of you have your book, your hard covered book there, look at the back, uh, the back uh, jacket and you'll see the chart of accounts. Think of these T accounts as a folder. Each one is a folder where we're going to put all the information that impacted a particular account. So we have cash and we're going to have accounts receivable and inventory and we're going to have payables, all kinds of accounts, as many as a company wants to set up. Every T account has an increase and a decrease side. Some accounts increase on the debit side and some increase on the credit side. 
That is the tricky part that we need to try to learn uh, this afternoon, okay? Some accounts increase on the debit side and some on the credit side. Balancing a T account, huh? Well, that's not too tough. Let's take a look at cash here. These transactions are mimicking the ones we did in chapter two, I think. But let's take a look at them. This fella started a business, it looks like, with $2,000. So the $2,000 is on the debit side, and it goes there. Cash is in that. Well, you're going to learn in a second what, what goes up with what. But look, but for purposes of balancing, all you do is add the two columns. Add the two columns together. And then the difference between the two is going to be the balance. Add the two columns. High man wins, okay? 3,500 minus 3,130 leaves us with a balance of $370. Find the balance by finding the differences between the debit and credit totals. So that shouldn't be too bad. And there we go. That's our balance. When we, at the end of the month, we're going to take all of the balances in the T accounts and put them into the trial balance. This balance is written on the side. The balance is written on the side with the larger total. High man wins is how I like to uh, put that together, okay? Let's take a look at the effects of the debits and credits on specific types of accounts. Whoa. To debit an account means you're entering an amount on the left side, again, Someone says debit cash, that means you know you're going to put the number on the debit side. To credit is just the opposite. That's going to go on the right side. Debits may increase or decrease the balance of specific accounts. And the same thing is true with credits. Some accounts go up with debits. Some accounts go up with credits. And that's the tricky part that we have to get into our skull before the first test. So let's look at some of the rules. Assets, all assets have a, what's called a normal debit balance. Assets have a normal debit balance. An asset should have a debit balance, meaning that you increase cash or any other asset with a debit. And conversely, you decrease on the credit side. Assets equals liability plus equity, right? Well, if assets equal liabilities plus equity, liabilities and equity would have to have a credit normal balance. So liabilities increase with a credit. You increase with a credit and decrease on the credit side. And the same thing is true with capital. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Liabilities and equity would have to have a normal credit balance. And there's different ways to try to memorize these five or six rules. And maybe we'll, we'll try a couple shortcuts today. Revenue, your sales, credit. Revenues have a credit balance, a normal credit balance. It increases with a credit. So if you put, I'm sorry, got happy fingers. If you put a number on the right side, the credit side, you are increasing it, okay? So, so far, assets have a debit balance and go up with a debit. Liabilities and equity and revenues are all credits. Well, if sales and revenues have a normal credit balance, expenses have a normal debit balance. They increase on the debit side. Expenses increase with a debit, decrease with a credit. So, so far you have assets and expenses are the same. Assets and expenses have debit balances, liabilities and capital and revenue have the opposite. And then we have this outlier called drawing. This is an account we're not gonna be using much after, after the first uh, five or six weeks of the class. Well, that's, that's the whole class, isn't it? <laughs> five or six weeks. We're not gonna be using this pretty quickly. The, it's a drawing, the drawing account has a debit balance. It's part of capital, but capital has a normal credit balance. This account is used to reduce capital. It's called a contra equity account. 
contra equity account. It has the opposite sign control. So with drawings has a debit balance. And those are your rules. Those are the, the six things we need to understand. Let me show you a couple of other slides that might be helpful. One of these might make it click. Assets debit balance equals liability, which has a credit balance and equity, which has a credit balance. And what becomes part of equity we're learning? The sales, credit balance, expenses, debit balance, drawing, debit balance. So perhaps looking at this umbrella would make a little more sense. Under equity, you have revenues, expenses, and drawings. Revenues increase with a credit. Expenses and drawings increase with a debit. You net them all together. Revenues, expenses, drawing, and that's, your, that's gonna be your capital increase. Here is probably the best grid in the book to understand this. And you don't have to, you don't have to memorize all three columns. Just have one very clear in your mind. Just have one clear in your mind. Perhaps it's the normal balance, the normal balance of an account, but maybe work with increase. Let's work with increase. Assets increase with a debit, so do expenses and drawings. Assets, expenses, drawings increase with a debit and liabilities, owner and revenues increase with a credit. And there's um, a mnemonic uh, one of the teachers uh, gave me that I kind of liked. It says, after eating dinner, let's read comics. After eating dinner, let's read comics. A, after dinner. E, after eating, eating. D, after eating dinner, let's read comics for capital. <laughs> so, so maybe something like that can help you. And here's another little tip I'm going to throw out. Assets, I'm sorry, assets, drawing, expenses, liabilities, owner's capital, revenues, that goes in alphabetical order. So the first three are assets, the last, the first three have debit balances, the last three have credit balances. There's all kinds of tricks to trying to understand debits and credits. And you will struggle with this. Those of you who haven't taken 110 or maybe a little bookkeeping in high school, this will kind of drive you nuts for, for a little bit till it gets, in, it gets into your skull okay. So let's use, the, let's use the T accounts now to record some transactions. In chapter one and chapter two, we did transactions. Uh, chapter one, we did transactions where we were putting the um, accounting equation horizontally across the page and then picking up the numbers. Let's look at the T accounts. Again, what happened? Understand what happened. What accounts are we going to attack? And how is the equation impacted? All right. So let's go through here. And oh my goodness, we're back Mitchell Williams again. He has come back with his business and he's invested $5,000. Identify the accounts that are affected. Well, he just started a business. There was nothing there. And on, on the first day, he put $5,000 in his company's bank account. So you have cash and capital. Cash is an asset. Capital is part of owner's equity. Let's call it owner's equity. Owner's equity. And the transaction is entered as an increase in the asset and an increase in capital. So let's take a look at it. We're going to debit cash because cash goes up with a debit and capital, owner's capital goes up with a credit. And there she is. There it is. There's your famous accounting equation showing it across the board here. So look at those T accounts. Cash went up with the debit and capital went up with the credit. Keep your eye on these plus minuses while you're learning this. 
and hopefully it'll it'll sink into the old brain there, okay? Purchased an asset for cash. He purchased an asset using another asset. So one asset equipment is going to go up and another asset is going to go down, down. So let's take a peek here. Sure enough, he bought delivery equipment for $2,000. That goes up with a debit and the other asset cash goes down with a credit. Starting to see the rules of debits and credits. He bought a second motor, motor scooter on account for $1,800. Whenever you see on account, you know the transaction is going to be accounts payable or accounts receivable on account and nobody had money on account and no money. That's what that means. So what did he buy? He bought delivery equipment. So that's going to go up. Accounts payable is also going to go up. Accounts payable is the total dollars that you owe to your suppliers, huh? So it looks like delivery equipment is an asset. Accounts payable is a liability or an IOU or a debt. So we're going to debit delivery equipment to increase that asset. And we're going to credit accounts payable to increase the liability. Debit delivery equipment, credit accounts payable. Keeping your eyes on the pluses and minuses up on top. Well, he's paying down some of that debt now. So what accounts are affected? Well, he's going to pay them with cash for sure and accounts payable. So cash is going to be an asset accounts payable liabilities. So the asset is going down. Cash is going to have to be credited and accounts payable will be debited. So look at your cash now. You had a balance of 3,000 to begin and now the balance is down to 2,000. You had a balance, I guess, of 5,000 and begins down to 2,400. Here's the 600 credit to cash. 600 debit to accounts payable, which reduced accounts payable. Accounts payable goes is increased with a credit. It has a normal credit balance. Let's see, we have, whoop, 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 whoop the numbers. Mitch made deliveries and received $2,100. Oh, that's great. He, he, got, he has some revenues now. He made some sales. So those he calls his sales delivery fees and he's going to get cash. So cash is going to increase and so are revenues or delivery fees. We're going to debit cash and credit delivery fees. Debit cash for $2,100 and credit delivery fees for $2,100. Again, revenues go up with a credit. He paid some rent, rent expense now. Rent expense is an expense. Cash is an asset. They both have normal debit balances, right? After eating dinner, expenses and assets have a normal debit balance. So in this case, cash is going to go down with a credit and rent goes up with a debit. Debit rent is how you say that. Debit rent for $1,000, credit cash for $1,000. And now we're moving along. The phone bill, same thing. He got the phone bill in the mail. Okay, well, that's an expense. So we're going to have to deal with cash and an expense called phone expense. He decided to have a separate folder in his general ledger for phone expense, okay? So we have to decrease the asset and increase the expense. We're gonna debit phone expense, credit cash. Debit phone expense, 
credit cash. Delivery revenues earned on account. Again, when you see the words on account, say to yourself, on account and nobody had money. It's either going to be accounts payable or accounts receivable. So he made deliveries on account. So that's clearly accounts receivable because we are going to be receiving this money in the near future. So what accounts are involved? Accounts receivable. We know that from the on account and delivery fees. So one is an asset, one is a revenue. And we are going to say to ourselves, revenues are recognized when earned. The delivery fees are going to go up as well as the AR. We are going to debit accounts receivable to increase it and credit sales or delivery fees to increase those. So here we go. Debit accounts receivable for 2400 Credit your delivery fees, huh? Hopefully these debits and credits will sink in to the point where you know them like your own name. Purchase supplies. Well, this is an asset we decided. We decided these supplies will last for seven months. Since they will generate future benefits, the supply should be recorded as an asset, okay? So we have two asset accounts involved, cash and supplies. Cash is an asset. Supplies is, it says revenue here. That's totally wrong. The bottom of that slide. We're going to debit supplies, debit supplies and credit cash. We just exchanged one asset for another. Notice that our equation is still in balance. 9,600 assets equals liabilities 1,200 plus 8,400 in equity. Owner's capital. Now, some of those customers are paying him. They owed us $2,400, right? Well, he receives $1,900 now. Mitch receives cash, but this transaction does not affect the revenue. The revenue was recorded when it was earned, not when he was paid, okay? And that's an important uh, concept we'll be working hard on. Identify the accounts. Well, cash, he knows he's gonna get cash. He also knows that some of this accounts receivable was just paid. So we have two asset accounts being impacted. We're going to debit cash. We're going to increase cash with the debit of 1900 and credit accounts receivable for 1900. Ah, that's strong whiskey, okay? Now we go to the next. Purchase of an asset on a credit, making a partial payment. Good gosh, what happened here? Mitch bought a new motor scooter for $1,000. He made a down payment of 300 and the remaining 700 he's gonna pay in the future. So we got three accounts here, three. Remember, you always have to have two. You must have one debit and one credit. One debit and one credit. You can have one debit and a million credits. You can have one credit and a thousand debits, but you have to have at least one debit, one credit. So let's see what we have here. He bought more delivery equipment. He paid for some of it and the rest goes out into accounts payable. Delivery equipment increases by a thousand. Cash decreases and accounts payable increases. So we're gonna debit delivery equipment for a thousand, credit cash, that reduces that asset. And we're gonna credit accounts payable because a credit increases a liability. And we're just moving along here. So far this business, so far if this was the end of the, of the month, he would have a profit of 4,500 minus a thousand minus a hundred he'd be making a nice profit of $3,400. We bought an insurance policy, prepaid insurance. When you buy an insurance policy, by definition, it is an asset. 
it is not an expense until you actually get the benefit of the insurance policy. It would be nice if we could wait for an accident and then buy the insurance. And that doesn't work that way. You have to buy the insurance and expense in, in advance. So since insurance is paid in advance, it will provide future benefits. It's treated as an asset. So we purchased another asset called prepaid insurance, which we're going to debit and we're crediting cash. And now we've added another asset, prepaid insurance. They slipped it in before the delivery equipment right here, the blue and blue. So we're getting, we're getting there, huh? Ah, finally a big expense. He has to pay his employees. All these students who are driving these scooters around delivering pizza. So here's an expense, wages expense cash wages expense and cash wages increases by 1650 cash decreases by 1650 huh that means we're going to debit wage expenses for 1650 and credit cash for 1650 and that's what we're doing here we're debiting wages expense and crediting cash, okay? And again, I urge you to look, keep your eyes on the top of the screen here, follow these pluses and minuses. You just have to learn the pluses, remember. If you know the pluses, you know the minuses, okay? Deliveries made for cash and credit. Okay, wow, he's got some more business, huh? Total deliveries, he delivered another 3,500. So those are sales. 900 was received back in cash right away and 2,600 on account and nobody had money. So we know it's accounts receivable or accounts payable. In this case, it's clearly accounts receivable. We delivered, we delivered meals and those meals are valued at $3,500. Since the fees have been earned, the revenue account increases $3,500 even though not all the cash has been received. The cash and the, and the recording of the income do not follow each other necessarily. So what do we have here? He, he, he had some sales, they're gonna go up. This asset cash is going up and accounts receivable, another asset re increasing. So what do we see here? We're gonna credit delivery fees for 3,500 debit cash for 900 and debit accounts receivable for $2,600. Wow. So his delivery fees are now up to $4,500, huh? And here is the transaction. Hold on. They're not showing that transaction. So, oh, yeah, $1,650. Here's the M1650. That's the cash. Hold on one. What, what am I doing here? There you go. That's what you I, want. I, I got happy fingers sometimes. Yep. Got it. Oh, look at that. Jeez. Happy hands off like a doctor. You know, you got to be clean. Okay. Where is that darn 2600? Right okay. here. We debit accounts receivable for 2600. We debit cash for the 900 and we credit delivery fees. So he's got a nice profitable business going now, huh? He's got 8,000 in sales minus these three little expenses. And finally, withdrawals. And this one's a little trickier one. Withdrawals or drawings, drawings might be the way to go. Drawings have a normal debit balance. It is a contra account. It's called a contra account because it has the opposite sign control from the norm. Equ uh, withdrawals are part of owner's equity, but it's an account that's used to reduce the equity. So that's why it has a debit balance. And as we go through the class, you're gonna learn about the various contra accounts. Um, especially after the first test. So Mitch withdrew 3,000 from the business 
and it was for personal uses. So it has nothing to do with the company. Therefore, it's not an expense. That's a question they love to put on the test sometimes. True or false, withdrawals are an expense. No, not an expense. True or false, withdrawals reduce equity. Yes, it reduces equity, but it's not an expense. So let's see what we have here. We know cash is involved in drawing. Cash is going down. Drawing is going up. And by doing that, we're reducing capital. So we're going to debit drawing for 3000 and credit cash for 3000 And there's your drawing popping up right there. It has a debit balance. Took the 3000 out in cash, okay? So that's a little review on debits and credits. So let's work with these numbers now. These are our ending balances right here. The month has just ended. And Mitch had fees of 8,000 and he had, looks like three expenses. So let's prepare a trial balance and talk about why we do it, okay? The sum of the debits must equal the sum of the credits. We know that, right? And at least two accounts are affected by each transaction, one debit and one credit at a minimum, Me meaning the accounting equation must remain in balance. And I don't think that's ever gonna be a problem in your futures, okay? Unless you're doing this stuff by pencil like we used to have to do in the, the you know, ancient days. The trial balance, prepared periodically. It's prepared at month end. It's prepared at month end. As soon as the month ends, as soon as the fiscal month ends, the accounting guys and gals are going to be running all over the place. Who's got the current trial balance? Where's the trial balance? Because you're going to be working with this. We're going to run the trial balance, and it's just a list of all the accounts and their balances. And the only thing it does for us is prove that the accounting equation is in balance. Yeah, it can be in balance, but it could be 100% wrong too. And that's what the closing process is about, straightening out the trial balance. A trial balance is not a formal statement or report. The only people who see it are the accounting people. No one is interested in a trial balance, but it has a very important purpose, which is it's the aid we use to prepare the financial statements. And the trial balance is listed in the proper order. Assets, liabilities, equity, revenues, expenses. And that's important to understand. It goes in the order of assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, expenses. In other words, it goes in the order of your uh, counting equation. So here's the trial balance. Whoopee, we're in balance, 14,900. What? Every one of these numbers could be wrong. We don't know. Trial balance is not gonna tell us that. So there's our trial balance. Now, remember I told you that the trial balance runs in a particular order, assets, liabilities, equity, sales, revenues, and expenses. You see where it says delivery fees? I would get in the habit of drawing a horizontal line above it. In your, in your, when you're doing a problem, draw a line above delivery fees. The reason for that is everything below drawing and below the drawing is your income statement. Draw a line right after, right before delivery fees. Everything below that line is your income statement. Everything above it is the balance sheet. It's really that easy. And there's only one exception toward the end of the process. So let's take a peek here. We must do the financial statements in the proper order. You cannot do them out of order. It's impossible. You must do the income statement first. The income statement. Let's look at the income statement. Mitchell's campus delivery. So you always have the name of the company, the title of the statement, income statement. Notice that it says for the month ended June 30th, 2021. That's an important nomenclature. 
since the income statement covers the entire month and it's a, it's a bunch of numbers that increased every day. It's like a video. So you want to call it for the month ended. It's not a particular point in time. It's a total of what happened during the month. So we got 8,000, I see 1650, 1,100. Where did we get those numbers? Right from the trial balance, 8,000, 1,100, 1650. And here they are. Looks like they put them in order of high to low, which makes no sense to me, but total expenses, 2750. Subtract that from the 8,000 sales. That is one nice profit, huh? We were talking about that in the last chapter. This guy made $5,250 on an investment of 8,000. So he made about 66% on his money. That's pretty darn good, I think. We do the income statement first because we need to get the income in order to input it into the statement of owner's equity. And again, you have Mitchell's campus delivery, name of the statement, statement of owner's equity for the month ended or for the month of, uh, that's important to, to write it that way. So here, he started off with 5,000, you know, zero, obviously, before that. But our starting point is 5,000 that he invested, five, plus the net income, plus the net income, less the withdrawals or drawings, means that his capital increased by 2,250. 5,000 plus the 2,250 gives you his new capital balance of $7,250. And the reason we did the equity statement second is because we have to take that new number, that new total owner's equity number, and bring it over to the balance sheet. Notice that you do not see the withdrawals on the balance sheet. Of course, you should not see them. That's that's the owner's personal business. That's why we took it right out of capital. So that's that's the process. We prepare these we prepare these transactions like this. We come up with the ending balances, and we bring them over. Now I told you about that vertical that not vertical that horizontal across the page line above delivery fees. Everything above that line is your balance sheet. So now we're ready to prepare the balance sheet. And I see 470, 30, 180. There we go. You're copying every number from there, okay? You're copying every number from the trial balance. So let's take a look. We copied all of the assets down. We copied the accounts payable, but what we don't copy what we don't copy is the capital from here, and we don't copy the drawing. What we post, when I say copy, what we post is the new balance. And that is how the trial balance turns itself into financial statements, huh? So I think that was enough for one day. What do you think, Aranza? Okay, all right. Anybody have any questions they want to ask? Any any comments or anything? You keeping up okay, Chris? Yep. All it right. Just, so it, it just confuses me when I look at this stuff because I'm used to a spreadsheet detailing all this stuff that gets done in the statement, the yes. statements at the end in the actual spreadsheet. So it's weird to see it separated out. And I get why it's done, but it, it just seems like it would be easier for it to all be in the one spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with you. It might be a better way to go, but. Um, but I get main... why it, I get why it's done. I, I understand. Good. It's done. It's, it's Excellent. Just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to go back to one more slide. Come on now. Come on. This one here is the key to, to studying, I think. Right. And again, you only need to look at one column. The increase column is the only one you need to worry about. If you know the increase, the increase you know the yeah. decrease. Increase okay. and normal balance are the same, so. Yes, yeah. yes, I'm glad you reinforced that. 
Yeah, the increase, the increase, and the normal balance. At the end of the month, if you had a if you had a credit balance in cash, that would be a possible problem. A mistake has been made and not corrected yet, or somebody, or or you know you have some theft going on. So right, right. Okay, all right. Okay. Well, I guess we'll call it quits then. Okay, guys. Any other comments? Yep. Anybody? Okay. All I have right. A question. Go for it. But it's about like the quiz. I couldn't get one of the statements to balance out. Oh, okay, okay. Do you do you want to stay with me and, and show me what you you're working on? I can share. Yeah. You can share, share the screen. Okay. Good. Okay. See ya. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank and who and who's who's talking? Is this is this Wendy or right, Aranza? Yeah. You got your new customer. Uh, Wendy. Okay, Wendy, you're the one with the problem, right? Yes. All right, Wendy, here's what we're gonna do for Wendy here. I'm gonna set you up as a co-host, all right? Okay. You're gonna be like Andy Richter, okay? Okay. <laughs> if you know, do you know who Andy Richter is? Uh, no. He's a, the guy on Conan O'Brien, okay. You, can you, now, do you wanna to try to share the screen with me and show, you the, show me the problem? Yes. Um... If you don't know how to share, let me know. I can show you. Okay, just one second. You feel you keeping up with things so far? Uh, yes. All right. Yeah, I want all my 110 students when they get to 230 to bury the 230 people at the beginning anyway. Can you show your face, Wendy, or are you stuck at a, on an iPod? No, I can share my own screen. There we go. There's Wendy. All right. Uh-oh, okay, Wendy. I'm, Pray tell. I'm looking, who, I'm looking for... Um, take your time. I'm trying to look for where I wrote it down. All right, you are sharing the screen. Okay. Can you see my yeah, screen? I can read that, okay. Okay, so you came up with a uh, an income statement, 12,750. Um, this was a homework assignment, you said? Oh, uh, no, this is from the quiz. Oh, okay. Uh, quiz. Okay, well, let's take a look at it. Um, assuming you did the arithmetic correctly, 24. Yeah, that looks right, 28,750 minus. So you came up with the net income and now you're doing your capital report, right? Yes. Okay, so you did it, you put it in uh, out of order. So that might've confused you. So let's, yes. let, let, let me restate it for you. Okay. You had a beginning of 8,750. They gave you that, right? Uh, no, I just calculated that. You shouldn't have to calculate the beginning. They should give you the beginning. Um, there was no beginning. What, did they give you a trial balance or anything? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Let me ask this question then. What were they asking? They were, um, To create um, an income statement, the um, owner's okay. equity statement, and the balance sheet. Okay, well, let's take a look at it. You you have a beginning balance of eight thousand seven fifty, right? Correct. Yes. And then you you came up with the seven the twelve seven fifty withdrawals, so that's five seven fifty, seven fifty, and that adds up to fourteen five hundred. Yes. Okay. So that that looks good to me. Okay. Okay. Then you brought over your assets, 
and you're off by quite a lot. Yes. I see, I see accounts payable. Eleven. I'm assuming again. I'm assuming the arithmetic is right, and I think it is. Seventeen. Yeah. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, I think your arithmetic is good. So why are we off so much, huh? Yeah, Do you have a calculator I... with you? Yes. What is $24,700 minus $18,950? Let's see what that difference is. $5,750. Well, there's our problem. We're off by that number for some reason. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think I see it. Okay. You see where you have capital of 14500 on January 1st? Yes. It looks like we didn't add in the, the, the 57500. In other words, I'm thinking that your beginning number was 14500. Oh, I, okay. I see what you did. Yeah. Okay. Here's what happened. Your beginning January number is 14,500. Okay. Okay. And it, it is to that we want to add the 5,000, 5,750. So take 14, go into your calculator, 14,500. 14,500. Okay. Plus 5,750. Okay. Then I get 20,250. So, so step on that number there, 20,250 plus your 44, 20, 22,050, hold on. Plus the 4,450. Yeah, yeah that gives me the 24,700. Yeah, yeah, add the 5,750 plus the 14,5 and then add 4,450 and that should balance you out. Okay. Um, In other words, just change on your balance sheet, change the capital from yeah. 14,500 to 20,250. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, then, and then add the 40. I was confused because in the. Um, in the question, like they give us like the cash and everything. Yep. And why is the capital for January um fourteen thousand five hundred and then but it ends in December thirty first. Okay. Can you show me the problem now too? Yes. So we balance we balance this out. So hopefully that uh, gives you a little sense of relief. And then let me, if you don't mind, let me see the problem, and I might be able to glean why it was a little bit uh, of a mix up. Okay, um, give me one second. Ooh, is that that rough looking dog I see terrorizing the town? <laughs> okay, now I see it. Now I see it, okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they want you to do it for the, yeah. What you did was, it looks like you just reversed the beginning and ending, I see. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. In other words, they, they gave you some information here out of order and you very you you did the hard part. OK. OK. So, yeah, we we want to find out what the capital was on December 31st, 2020. Right. Yes. Yes. They're giving us the beginning number, which is the fourteen thousand five hundred. Yes. So fourteen thousand five hundred plus your income of what, what was the income again? You have the number in front of you. Um, the twenty thousand two hundred fifty. Whatever, well, whatever the income was, yeah. Oh, seven. the net income was um twelve thousand seven hundred fifty. Okay. okay, so it's seven thousand plus twelve thousand minus any drawing of seven. It looks like seven thousand drawing, right? Yes. Yeah. So fourteen thousand five hundred. You can put it in your your uh, calculator if you want. Double check. 14,500 mm -hmm. plus the net income that you accurately uh, computed on your sheet minus mm -hmm. 7,000 gives you that $20,000 number, right? Yes. Plus the 4450 
I'm sorry, plus the 4450 in accounts payable. Yes. Okay. So you did oh, very okay. well on that problem. Okay, yeah, I, um just the balance sheet I Yeah, I the put balance it wrong sheet. Yeah. I put 18,950. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and that's because you took the uh, 14500. You thought that was the ending is the way you actually approached it. Yes. Okay, so this was for the whole year then? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, this is this is a this is a snapshot when it comes to the balance sheet. That's how much cash they had on hand. That's how much accounts receivable. And yeah. when you come to the capital, that was the balance at the beginning of the year. Okay. And now we have to add the income, subtract the withdrawings, okay? Okay. Did that help you out there, Wendy? Yes. All right. I think we'll call the meeting to an end then, okay? You got any other questions? Okay. No, that was it. Okay. We'll see you Friday, right? Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.